All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I got another watch list for you, and we have more earnings on the way this week, as well as some big economic data. So I thought we should start off here with a couple of plays because you are probably going to hear about these all week. So I got five stocks that you need to be watching. I'm going to get into these, and then I still got the keys and plays and everything else, but... Number one, baby, Netflix. Do not forget about the post earnings continuation. They really did have a unique earnings compared to a lot of the other big tech, and we're going to talk about that. But number one, Netflix, watch out for them. Number two, Intel. You're going to hear a lot about the chip makers, but they report this week, and that will create a lot of sympathy. So this is another big earnings. And then number three, IBM. This is more of a value play. They've kind of been underperforming, and I've really fascinating to see what it'll do for both value as well as cloud stocks and in a weird way that will be related to Microsoft and now these are the two big ones you're going to hear Microsoft and Tesla but Microsoft keep your eyes out for them they report Tuesday so day after tomorrow we are going to get into those earnings right away and the big focus will be cloud but think about plays before and after and well the same thing applies for Tesla as well too they have their earnings on Wednesday so, Chad, we have a lot. The big thing people are going to be talking about, I don't know if you guys remember what happened last week. We had the first, like, big sell-off since December 15th, and then things bounced back, and now we're right in the middle. Even though we ended the week negative, it wasn't that bad, but everybody is talking about the recession and the recession probability. So here's our first pretty picture of the day, and it is how industries perform. So I'm going to give you a little bit more details as to why the recession and recession odds are so important. But now coming into this week, especially after this week's earnings and then next week's, everybody is going to start looking at industries to say, okay, well, are we before the recession? Are we after the recession? Is there a soft landing or not? and it really brings up a lot of interesting points about who has a better chance to underperform or outperform and where Wall Street is really seeing a lot of risk. So we'll go over this a lot more in depth tomorrow on the stream. But Chad, I need your help now. Before I get into the rest of the keys and all of that, this is the random play generator, okay? We do this every Sunday on Monday morning before the bell. We do a random comment picker and we pick a random option trade. So I need your help, please. If you don't want to like the video or subscribe that would be appreciated as well too but not nah, like seriously just post the option trade strike price expiration date keep it below $100 and we are going to do a random play and see what happens I mean it's not too bad this is what we're holding now the only winner so far is gold even though you guys were way ahead of the dollar puts I mean you know the options you know how they are so Chad let's get it and run it baby yeah Still reinvesting, fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if you waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, downhill. But right off that bat, like I said, you are gonna be getting a lot of data this week, and arguably the GDP may be the most important. So we're gonna be getting that early on to start the week, but a lot of eyes are on hey, what was the growth rate for fourth quarter? Don't forget the summary of economic projections. The Fed has been given their outline, and this is just broadly speaking, even though it's somewhat lagging, it's giving you an idea of how the global economy is performing. So we will be getting those numbers this week, and that will be important. And then next, you're going to be getting the PCE, I believe, Wednesday, but then mainly Friday morning. That's where you're going to get the month over month and all of that. The PCE, this is the Fed's favorite inflation gauge. If this goes down, that could be good, but don't forget, we're coming off of a lot of good inflation data. But at the end of the day, this is a big set of data, and then we're going to want to see what happens. And then on top of that, you're going to be getting personal personal spending, jobless claims, and consumer sentiment on Friday. There's also going to be global PMIs, I believe, in the morning. But now these data sets will be key because like last week, after a couple of them, everybody's going to start stringing these together to say, well, does this increase the odds of a recession or does it decrease it? And we're going to talk about that in the next key. But on top of all of it now, you're getting another set of big earnings. Like we said, Tesla, Microsoft, IBM, and Intel. These will be the 
biggest earnings, but what you got to keep in mind is that, yes, it is just about these companies and when they report, but these are the first ones during earnings season, so if they do good, it's going to get people excited. If they do bad, then the fear may start to come back a little bit, but watch out for that. That is key number one, and key number two now, besides the earnings this week, it's just going to be all about the recession on. So like I told you, you will be getting those global PMIs and all of the data, and a lot of people are expecting it to ease. Again, at the end of last weekend, everybody was feeling really, really good about things. We kind of got off to a bad start at the beginning of last week, and then people are like, wait a minute, what's going to happen? And then this weekend now too, people are a little bit more cautious, but everyone's saying, well, it seems like this tune of recession and the odds of soft landing are once again increasing pretty much. There is less odds of a recession right now, and this week with all of these data sets, PMIs, GDP, personal spending, consumer sentiment, everyone's going to be looking at this to say, does this increase or decrease the odds of recessions? And again, add that to the earnings there, but at the same time, uh, anybody who does not believe in this rally, again, I hope you guys just see where we're at right now. Yes, we're in the middle of things. We dropped big after Powell, did nothing for the end of the year, and this has been a monster rally, and believe it or not, the U.S. United States is underperforming. So this is big for us, but every other country in the world has gone another 2 to 3% higher than we have already. So some people like this. Some people say it's not over yet. We got to wait for the Fed. And like I'm telling you, the bull case this week would be data is good, nothing recessionary, and people saying, well, yeah, soft, and soft landing odds are increasing. That's looking good. But then on the reverse, some people on the bearish side are saying, well, the data should calm down. And if it does, this will actually be the last stage of the bear market it where everybody thinks it's all clear and then you get the final death blow so pretty interesting i hope you can make up your mind for yourself here but the point is this whole rest of this month is going to be crazy because before you know it now in your third key you're going to be ending it with powell so that's what we got to watch for this week it is the final week until powell you shouldn't be hearing from any of the other fed speakers they are on that blackout period as well but just keep in mind one Towards the end of the week, everyone's going to start, you know, wanting to move a little bit less before Powell. So we'll see how that plays out. But at the same time, just don't forget how the market moves ahead of big earnings and then after big earnings. I even think Netflix and what you got on Thursday, Friday, that was a very, very great example if you don't know what I'm talking about. So we're going to see how it plays out. But all in all, this week is all about the data, all about earnings, and it's going to be the final setup in the Powell. So I hope you're ready, but let us get into the play. So right off the bat, like I told you, those five stocks in the beginning, I don't have them here as the plays, but I would definitely be watching those. I would not be as surprised if we made a play on all of them, either before earnings or after. And like I'm telling you, those five earnings plays, Intel, IBM, uh, Microsoft, and Tesla, I think there's one more. No, I think I just added Netflix because it was on there, but simply they will have a lot of sympathies. But now as far as the first play, this one's a sympathy already. Disney, this is a good reaction to Netflix. We saw what it did on Friday, but now they have broken past this like earnings breakout level, and I'm still holding this one too. I'm riding it through, but this is really what I want to show you, and we'll see how this week goes. I pretty much think if all is well, we should be able to go crazy, but last time at earnings, they were at $100. They dropped. Then the Bob Iger news came in. They couldn't get above 100 like barely above it, but last time they were above like 102 or something, it was was like right around here and this was following their other negative earnings reaction so pretty much it should like magnet up to the 108s we'll see but if people are really going to feel optimistic it'll probably be around 112 to 108 where it was at the earnings prior to this big drop right here so keep that in mind I'm still in that I think we already got like four or five bucks a share it actually did very good and I just bought this one after hours right when we had a good Netflix earnings again the idea is earning sympathy and I hope that you can apply this logic to a lot of other plays this week as well too but watch out for that that is play number one then play number two man meta i am still short on this and maybe this is my bias coming through but I probably will hold in the earnings. This is one thing I was thinking of. We had these big earnings, and we're going to see what happens here with like Microsoft and Tesla. But pretty much, if you look at Meta stock and see how it is up since their last bad earnings, it's a little different than how Netflix moved. And pretty much what I'm saying is that the reason they dropped and popped 
Remember, this little pop in momentum, this was off of, like, reports of them cutting costs. But it really wasn't anything crazy, whereas, like, we go and look at Netflix. Remember, they had a bunch of bad earnings. I mean, I, gotta, I think I got to pull it up a lot. They had two bad earnings. They weren't doing good, and it wasn't till right here where they actually, or I think it was, like, October, they had a great earnings, and then they were able to rise from it. So pretty much I think Netflix is kind of, or Meta has gotten its bottom bounce here, but... I think their earnings is probably going to be a little bit more vicious than any of the other ones. And hopefully by the time we get Microsoft, Tesla, maybe we'll get some more insights into it. But watch out for them. I'm still on short for that one. And that is play number two. And then finally, play number three, baby, Abbott. Uh, I made this play after hours, like really, really late after hours on Friday. There was news about a probe or an investigation by the Department of Justice over uh, their ties or what happened with the whole baby food and baby formula. So it dropped and then popped up. I only went 25 shares short at like 111 or something like that so it was already pretty high and it's a healthcare name so we'll see how it plays out but definitely watch how this news develops over this week it'll either be big or it'll be something that'll get brushed off like really really quickly by the morning tomorrow we will find out but as far as everything else I made a couple of plays on Friday uh, let's get to it. Where was it? Start with Goldman. Yeah, that was genuine. We actually made a lot there, but I opened up actually by buying 15 more Netflix. I'm still holding now 20 shares. Remember, I flipped out the other 20. I think we're up like 180 on that one. Then I sold a short Goldman. We had news very, very early on them. Or wait. I don't think it's something on there in the morning. I think before Netflix, I did pre-market or one minute after I grabbed 50 shares of Microsoft. They were up 1% at the open. I wanted to go a little bit lower, but I'm still holding those. And then I shorted Goldman, I guess, back and forth. I sold it, then bought it, then sold it and bought it. We did just under $300 profit. I took $200 profit on my Uber position. And then there was that Abbott. That was like, what? I want to say like an hour after the bell or two hours almost. Again, it was like right there. I think I got right off on stream and then the news came out and then I did 25 shares there. But those are the only other plays that I did. And then as far as what I'm holding, you'll see here's the Microsoft going to be writing this into pre-earnings tomorrow. Hopefully get out of that. There is the Disney shares following Netflix, the bonds. We gave up that 5,000 in profit, but still up here a little bit. So I still need it to work to balance up. And now ES should be back there. And then we're back down a lot on the NQ and then Procter and Gamble still down down on that one from last week with earnings. Yes, we will be getting the dividend. I saw how it moved. It wasn't too much. I'm pretty much hoping this one comes back, uh, given to that a lot of the value plays underperformed the last couple of weeks. And then Tesla there, uh, the child support's almost close to being back. I believe we are now up on two of our average downs or right underneath it. So we'll see if they get that earnings run up or hopefully if earnings could even save them. And then again, the Netflix isn't on there and still with like the BA locking, all of that again, haven't really changed much uh, except for getting rid of the Uber and then still holding Disney and now Microsoft as a pre-earnings play. And then again, I think on Thursday or right before that, I closed the Activision, but I don't know if I put that on the watch list. So Chad, that is all there is. It's going to be an exciting week. You better get that random play in, but we're going to have more earnings. And before you know it, pal is either going to bless the bounce or he's going to bless the bottom. So I hope you're ready, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, baby, time is your most important asset. You better give yourself enough time to succeed. Don't judge things too early and understand whatever you can accomplish with your hands. Chances are multiplied by time. Oh, yeah, you're going to do good, baby. But, Chad, we got another week here of the year. Let's finish it out. Or right, let's start it out. I don't even know. I keep saying that. But, Chad, I hope you're as pumped as I am. Before you know it, man, things may not be as this exciting. And then we're going to have to wait for next quarter. So make the most of it now. Balance that budget. Save that 10%. And the Chad loves you, baby. Get some good night's sleep, okay? Drink some water, baby. I'll see you in the morning. Hearn. <laughs>